been an entrepreneur most of my life, as the previous speaker was. Uh, and it was uh, quite by accident, uh, actually uh, through the b blessings of children, as Stephanie mentioned, that uh, I found uh, myself uh, being in the inspiration business. So let me talk about how uh, it came to that. I was born actually in Budapest, Hungary, at a time when it was uh, still communist and a repressive regime. And uh, by the time I was seven years old, my fi family finally had the opportunity to travel abroad. And uh, during that trip, uh, we, uh, in the middle of one night, I remember my father coming into the room saying, that's it, we're going. And uh, at that point, uh, they explained to me, as we were riding in a taxi cab across town, that we'll never be going back. And uh, I didn't quite know what that meant as a seven-year-old. Uh, at the time, all I could think to do, maybe I've told some of you this before, a little bit embarrassing, but was to cry about the fact that I would not be seeing my teacher again who'd been beating on me because I was a bad student. Uh, anyway, touching. Uh, so uh, I spent six months uh, in Paris, France, then uh, in a day school learning French, making new friends, and uh, experiencing a whole new life that I'd not seen before, uh, namely the Western Europe compared to communist Eastern Europe. Uh, after which, uh, we finally had our chance to enter the United States uh, in the summer of 1977. And uh, actually one of the most memorable experiences, and forgive me if you find this terribly like commercial or, uh, well, whatever. Con uh, I was a child walking into Toys R Us for the first time, having come from Eastern Europe. And if you can imagine what that was like, uh, it's the largest thing I'd ever experienced. Uh, my aunt thought she was doing me a favor, buying me toys. And as the doors opened and the, this waft of cold, air-conditioned air, which I'd never felt before, washed over me, there were just aisles and aisles of toys. And I thought to myself, my god, what a country, right? Like, I'm sure you've heard things like this before from other immigrants. But uh, it was quite impressive to a seven-year-old. And I suppose, in a way, that was my first uh, experience with the idea of inspiration. Fast forwarding through my career, uh, I uh, did some graduate studies that uh, landed me in a, in a role where I was uh, an entrepreneur once again in finance, as Vladimir mentioned, uh, managing other people's money. Uh, and uh, although that was a, a rewarding career, um, it's terribly competitive uh, and uh, not terribly inspiring. Uh, it, certainly personally rewarding, uh, uh, but uh, yeah, not, not so great on the inspiration front. Uh, but once again, my life took a turn where uh, my wife had the opportunity to come to Switzerland to work for uh, a company, and I took on the role of being a trailing spouse. Uh, so again, another major change. Uh, now I was taking care of my kids at home, when one day one of them said, I want to go to Minecraft camp. And uh, hopefully you all know what Minecraft is. Uh, well, it's a, an online game where kids can use what look like Lego bricks to construct uh, buildings or make uh, all kinds of contraptions. And uh, I just asked them, well, what is Minecraft camp? They told me about it. And uh, I called up uh, the company that was sponsoring these camps in the US. And I th said, this would be something great to have in Switzerland. And they said, we agree with you, but we're not coming. So. Uh, that was an opportunity, I thought. And sure enough, three years uh, later on, we're, I'm here uh, where we have operations uh, in pretty much all of the major cities throughout Switzerland. But I'm not here to pat myself on the shoulder. I'm here to actually tell you about something interesting that I shared uh, on the high-level panel that I sat on yesterday as well, which is, <coughs> excuse me, when we first started, uh, we started like, um, many other enterprises that are trying to really deliver uh, education on a scaled basis uh, throughout the world, not just in the developed world, but to take advantage of the uh, low-cost nature of things like e-learning to spread uh, education and technology throughout Africa, uh, throughout uh, other developing regions of the world. Um, and my point was, I'm not a fan. Uh, that's to put it uh, in the short term, but, but what I really mean is we tried to do something very similar to that. We tried licensing technologies and sitting kids in rows uh, uh, in front of screens with headphones on and having either a person or a chat bot or some kind of instructional video walk them through uh, a series of exercises so that they would learn concepts about coding. Uh, and very similar to the kinds of things I'm sure you've seen throughout the forum 
um, in terms of e-learning. And I don't mean to knock e-learning as a, as a whole because I think it's very effective for adults. I just don't believe, in my experience anyway, and I've certainly experienced it with plenty of children, uh, that it's effective. What is effective is to inspire them. And if I may tie this back now to my personal experience, um, I can tell you that the most rewarding interactions that we had, and we had a lot of them today, today was amazing. Uh, it was, uh, and, and we were really trying to like dissect what had happened to get that uh, uh, vibe going in the room, because we've certainly worked with 80 kids before, but today the outcomes were just like the, the things we dream of as educators. <laughs> Everybody got to take home a finished product, Everybody was like happily interacting with the, the things that the devices that they were making, uh, and our instructors were all smiling. Our instructors were all, were all sort of like uh, very excited at the end. Really, a truly amazing experience. And uh, we're wondering if maybe it wasn't the address by your colleague early on that was something along the lines of "You better learn what these kids are going to teach you, <laughs> or otherwise." You're not going to have a career. Well, we exaggerate a little bit, but it certainly put uh, an inspiration to them as well. Uh, in any event, uh, the, uh, the interesting thing is uh, that what we've done and what I was saying yesterday on the panel was we pick projects and we think of ourselves as curators of projects that have outcomes that tie something meaningful, whether it's something from a community or something that resonates for a child uh, to the, the skills that they need to learn. The technology for us just happens to be a hook. If we, I guess, if we had to uh, teach them using clowns or uh, how to build an automobile, I'm sure we could like make a good camp out of that because I have a great team and I have people who are seeking to be inspirers of children. And that's what I would um, emphasize uh, both to those that seek to uh, inspire and educate children no matter what techniques you're using, whether it's remote or one-on-one -on -one or group-on-one. -on -one. Um, make sure that you're inspired by this. You want to work with kids first. Uh, that's the thing that's really going to drive the program and drive the outcomes of the program as well. So uh, just to tie this up for you, um, I want to think back to that, that sort of formative experience for me of, of changing from one very particular way of looking at the world or understanding the world to a completely different one when I was uh, uh, leaving France, actually. And, uh, I remember my father was walking up ahead of us, uh, and I was thinking to myself, I was seven years old, I was like, wow, that guy really knows what he's doing. And I would follow him just about anywhere. And I think, fast forwarding now to uh, something like today where we're working with the kids, and I'm actually working with maybe just one-on-one -on -one for the short periods of time that I have with some of the kids, like, I think back to that moment, and I think to myself, like, this is my chance now to like, lead this child on a journey of inspiration like that. And yeah, I, like, like I said, it doesn't necessarily, it wouldn't have to even be technology. I think if you carry yourself in that way, you can inspire the kids in that way as well. So I thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sebastian, very much.